we're going to be looking at the magic carpet. And this is from Aladdin. It's from MIT. So keep that in mind. But let's talk about what this magic carpet is and why they even decided to make this thing. And it all comes down to actually privacy. So if you, if you're, do you remember the Connect? Did you ever have an Xbox? Yeah, I had an Xbox Connect. Okay. So it, when it came out, it was super revolutionary, right? It had this stereo camera. You'd put it on your Xbox and it would start capturing the motions of your body and your body's position and use that as an input to play video games. Now, that's typically how people understand, I mean, how devices understand people's positions in a, any given environment. But there are privacy concerns with that. As technology has advanced, people feel less easy about having devices in their homes that can record tons and tons of information. Yeah, well, I can't even imagine, like, now, the fact that we just had two live cameras rolling in our family room at all given times. Like, the Xbox Connect is cool, but it it is at least a concern of mine, and I am assuming a lot more people, like, what, where, how does privacy play into this? How are people connecting my data, and why do I have a camera rolling in my living room that could be filming me at any given time if it's compromised? Exactly, and people are becoming more and more conscious of that. There's been security companies that have had instances where people have tapped into people's actual video feeds and interacting with the people in the house, and that's just so scary. And obviously, if you can prevent that from happening, if you can prevent those devices from being in your home, you'll do whatever you can, right? So this is where MIT comes into play. They're like, look, we totally get it. But we also understand that understanding your position might be important for working out or health monitoring or ensuring that someone's safe. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create this carpet that has thousands and thousands of sensors on it, which are recording pressure inputs. So how much someone is putting weight on their left foot versus their right foot as they're doing a certain interaction. And at the same time, taking a video of their body to train a machine learning algorithm. This algorithm then matches these different pressure distributions to a specific you know, three-dimensional pose that a human being is doing so that once you have just the carpet in someone's home and they're stepping all over it, it can come up with an estimate of what they think your body pose actually looks like. Okay, so they have this mat with a ton of sensors in it. They create a machine learning model and they trained it basically by having cameras on, mm -hmm. like we're used to, but we want to get rid of to be, have more privacy. So they had the cameras on, they're having the sensor mat rolling at the same time, collecting data, and they basically have the people do a bunch of different positions. Standing, where they're doing like push-ups and sit-ups too, I imagine, because yep. it's not just where your feet touch the ground. But then they can take the cameras away, and now using all this data they collected and their machine learning algorithm, they can kind of guess what your body's doing based on your contact points on the ground. Is that right? As always, you hit the nail on the head, man. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. So some, some numbers here. Apparently, the model is able to detect your 3D position 97% of the times completely accurately. And in terms of your main joint position, so like your elbow, your shoulders, your hips, it can detect it within a 10 centimeter accuracy. So that, that, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, um, that's pretty insane that it can gather all that just based on what is touching the ground and where the pressure is allocated. Exactly. But that's, that's what I was going to get to. It really needs something to touch the ground. So it, this thing does have some downsides. For example, if you're doing like a floating sit up where just your butt is on the ground, but your feet are lifted up, it can't accurately determine what you're doing. Okay. Or if you're just standing and twisting like your upper torso, it can't determine the change in your upper body positioning. So there are some shortcomings to be aware of with the system. Um, with that said, this is the first iteration of a product that I didn't even know was like a possible, you know, direction we could go into for human body tracking, uh, human body position tracking. Yeah, I, it's super interesting to me for exercise. Like, imagine a yoga mat you can roll out and it knows what yoga positions you're doing. Um, without having to have a camera on you so you can be coached on how well you're doing yoga without being afraid that, you, you know, someone might be watching you live doing yoga. And th that is perfect for me, Dan, because I'm not sure if you know, I love yoga, but I, I suck at yoga. I am. Yeah, not I don't want to watch you do yoga. No think. one does. That's the yeah. reality of it. <laughs> so we're actually projecting the hackers with this technology. Yeah. What, what we're really doing is um, helping humanity by not having them watch me do yoga with this technology. So, you know, it benefits everyone. <laughs> Um, but what's cool about it is that, for example, like you could, you could lay down the mat 
and start doing push-ups. And with the pressure distribution, the model would know that you are doing push-ups. And let's say you've put in your body's information, your weight, your age, et cetera, et cetera. And it can count how many repetitions you do. So after your workout, it can be like, hey, by the way, it looks like you did 10 minutes of push-ups. You did 100 repetitions. And it looks like you burned about 250, 300 calories. That's awesome. So it's like, you know, you could get your P90X DVD, put it in the TV. You know, you're doing the workout along with it. But it's also counting your reps for you and seeing your form um, and making sure you're doing all the reps without having to have a live video rolling on you while you're doing it. Exactly. And, you know, if you have uh, elderly in your home or even children, you can make sure that, you know, they're safe as they're walking around or if they ever fall maybe you could have a system that sends a notification like it looks like someone fell you probably should check out the sector of your home yeah that's a huge huge application i worked for a robotics startup that was working the elderly place in the elderly sector i remember that yeah there there are more baby boomers retiring and getting older every single day than there are children being born um the age of the united states and the world is shifting heavily over to the elderly and a lot of these people want to age in place they don't want to go to a nursing home as they get older they don't want to go into assisted living they want to be able to live in the same home that they've lived in for years and years which makes sense makes sense right but technology like this might help family members and caretakers feel more confident in that the fact that their loved loved one may be able to age in place in their home knowing that there's something like this that might be able to detect if they fall. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, it's a win on on the privacy side. It has certain shortcomings, but the developers have already expressed interest in like iterating more and trying to figure out how to expand its current capabilities. They did mention that one thing they want to do is multi-person tracking on the same carpet. So I think that's something exciting to look forward to. Yeah, teach me how to dance. (laughs) And then we can both suck at dancing together on the carpet without anyone looking. See, more wins. More wins for the public. But yeah, I think it's super exciting. Um, I'm looking forward to what's going to come out of MIT's CCL department. And yeah, let's see where it goes. Me too.